Actually, this is um, so. This is something that has been discussed a little bit recently uh, online, and I've kind of been interested to see your thoughts on it based upon kind of what's just been brought up there. It's um, so I saw John Carvalho was talking about because um, he's building a wallet at the moment, I believe, or uh, is part of building a wallet. I mean, he was talking about essentially or complaining also about uh, that he felt the core devs, the Bitcoin core devs, were implementing too many new features, uh, which means they're going to they keep having to constantly rebuild things they've already done. Um, and he was saying essentially that he felt that uh, Bitcoin core and the developers should concentrate on making the software as lightweight and as dumb as possible so that people could build more using build more for bitcoin essentially and around bitcoin i didn't know what your like opinions or thoughts were on that because i know it's a bit of a kind of difficult topic to answer really um but i didn't know if you had any opinions on that obviously as it kind of imp impacts rgb to a degree uh, i do also in general not just for rgb and uh, it's not it's not a very uh is a conflicted opinion i think that in general uh john's point is right uh, in order to have a protocol as a global standard, you need uh, stability of the base layer, not rapid evolution. You want evolution on the upper layers, but you want stability at the base layer. So it's okay if browsers keep changing, but uh, uh, HTTP should not change so much and the TCP IP should basically not change at all. And it's indeed is not changing since version four in the eighties. So it's stable. And even if it's, if it's not great, even if it has problems, like uh, now we want to switch to IP version six because the space in version four is limited. So there are problems, but stability is, is even more important than, uh, than, uh, than improvement. Uh, the, the important thing is stability. So I think there is this point, And I think the base layers of Bitcoin, the ones that you use to, to, to build upon should get stable, which in a bad way is called ossified. But I think ossification for that kind of layer is good. It's not good for the whole stack. If, if all the project ossifies, that's bad. But if the base layer ossifies, they're actually good, especially in a politically sensitive stuff like Bitcoin, where there may be interest to influence developers to, uh, to, to, to uh, derail and hijack the development uh, towards more centralized choices or more Uh, regulated choices or more censorship prone choices. So the fact that the base layer is uh, uh, unchangeable, untouchable, unevolvable, that's actually a positive. And I agree with John. And I agree with John that uh, there may be a perverse incentive for people who specialize over the years to actually only uh, change the base layer and design the base layer. So the better core dev, like I don't, I don't want to attack these people that I respect tremendously, but just to give an example, a Greg Maxwell, a SIPA, people who are actually, they are superheroes, they are wizards of designing uh, small but necessary changes at, at the base layer that evolved with Bitcoin up to now, they may have in the future pervert incentives because their specialization now is not building stuff on top. It's not even uh, cleaning up Well, most of the people actually 90% of what they do is cleaning up and improvement of, uh, of efficiency. But they also have a strong, um, some of them have a strong specialization in protocol evolution at base layer. And this specialization may be not needed by the real world eventually because we have to get to ossification uh, at the base layer. So there may be a fight where actually some categories of core developers, the ones specialized in protocol evolution, they will fight to push more stuff and, and the network will have to push against because we just want stability of something that works well enough. Where I may disagree with John is that, uh, but, but this is a very soft disagreement because who knows what is right. The, there is this trade-off because it, the point is, where do you stop? If you stop at the first version of Satoshi's client, Uh, well, that sucks because they were like, they were bugs. So they were like a, a, a chain length bug. They were a lot of problems. Also, also eventually we'll have to fix the, you know, you will have to hard fork for the timestamp problem in, in, uh, in the distant future. So you cannot really uh, ch stop there. Uh, but you also can go on forever because first you said SegWit is fundamental. And then we said, okay, yeah, but Uh, now also L2 will be great for Lightning, but at this point uh, maybe uh, Taproot, uh, and then Taproot is is in now. That's great, but now I really want, for example, um, cross input signature aggregation. I think that once you already have uh, Snore signature, 
it would be great to aggregate now signature across input so you can actually incentivize people coin joining so you may coin join less expensive than non coin join so people will start to coin join for economical incentives and then you will have a great increase in privacy uh, so there are many reasons to, to to say we are not there yet uh, also the the infrastructure over bitcoin is already huge and difficult to move but not so huge like uh, it's true that nodes are not upgrading to taproot fast enough but they are kind of, i mean i'm not convinced we are already there and i think that these last few changes uh, uh will be it will be still way better to have these changes than not also because there is a, there is a trade off if you if you are too conservative now eventually we will get to a point where it will be really impossible from an economic point of view to to sneak other changes at the base layer because it will just be impossible right now it's maybe still possible so some fundamental stuff should be addable but then adam beck is uh, is answering to john in our twitter debate adam is saying okay but what about simplicity simplicity is uh, a generalized script uh, which is safe uh, uh, formally provable which can be used even to build the new cryptographic primitives like Schnorr. So it's like the ultimate change that makes every other change uh, in, possible on top without changing the protocol anymore. So it's the last soft fork that will end all the soft fork. But then John says, but I mean, where are you going to stop? Uh, now Bitcoin works, Lightning works. So maybe let's just stop. Uh, so I agree with him in principle. I think we're not there yet. In particular, I want to see Lightning adopted. Uh, John is saying Lightning works, but in dark uh, in dark net markets, uh, people are using Bitcoin. Uh, there is this legend that people are mostly using Monero. It's not true. The, the liquidity is mostly on Bitcoin, but this is creating a problems for uh, fees, of course, because eventually using the settlement layer to do e-commerce eventually is doomed because the blockchain doesn't scale. So I would like to see dark net, dark net uh, uh, markets adopting lightning but lightning privacy right now is pretty much is possible in theory but in practice it sucks so uh i think that for example not just l2 but also switching to uh to elliptic curve points instead of uh, actual of time contracts stuff like that must be done on lightning so anyway we have to redesign lightning uh, if, if not just for privacy so uh, at this point let's also sneak in l2 as well which actually which by the way l2 will make lightning uh looking very close to rgb because with l2 you do have to keep your last uh, um uh, valid uh, state update but you don't have to keep it secret is it's, it's not a toxic waste anymore and uh, just like in rgb you have to, to back up it to back it up but not to hide it and also you will not you will not need the watchtower anymore with l2 you will have to stay online to receive but you will not have to be online periodically to check because there is no punishment uh, there is no punishment transaction anymore so uh, l2 will make a lightning network a little bit less problematic us wide so again my opinion is conflicted i think john is right on principle but probably not on timing I don't know if I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm over optimistic about the timing. But uh, I think it's good that there are the two, uh, the two uh, narratives right now. I think it's good there is somebody screaming, guys, when you're going to stop? And somebody screaming, please, please, just this last one. This is very good for Bitcoin. And I think the interaction between these two forces will actually create an equilibrium that will leave somebody unhappy. Maybe uh, we will have three short fork and simplicity and Adam will be very happy and John a little bit pissed because he will have to rewrite everything and um, and maybe uh, maybe we will not even have anything after taproot and then Adam will be sad and John will be happy I don't know but I think it's needed to have both concerns interplaying right now yeah I can I can I can I can understand that so obviously we'll get to a point eventually is the hope uh from from your side and I guess from mine anyway as well that um eventually the people screaming okay let's just stop now is going to get enough that it basically becomes the point that we get to a simple enough point of stage that we just halt and, and then start developing a lot more on, on different layers um but that's interesting I think um 
to kind of bring up something that you said uh, much earlier in your first answer. Um, so, yeah, as, as you kind of said, uh, RGB is kind of developing uh, beyond what the initial vision was a little bit. So obviously kind of going for that uh, smart contract capability kind of Ethereum killerish kind of style. Um, it's something you'd said when you had this company come to you to review, uh, I think it was a token on, uh, it was going to be the ERC20 token uh, from, from what you'd said. Um, what, I guess, what were the... Um, the issues that you had with Ethereum and with uh, them trying to use, like to make an ERC token, which then prompted RGB as an idea. What were those uh, weaknesses and problems that you saw at the time? Yeah, so first of all, Ethereum is an altcoin, which is not a question of, uh, I don't know, in, uh, philosophical purity, it's a practical question. Uh, an altcoin usually has a set of incentives that make me think that the current infrastructure will not be as is in a very few years, and it will have to rewrite everything, which is not even an, a, a theory. With Ethereum, they, they already know that it's completely unscalable and they are already uh, basically uh, ruling, uh, they're already rolling out the beacon chain of Ethereum 2, which is even more complex and centralized. And, and so even if you like Ethereum 2, the point is you have to know that what you are building on top of Ethereum is not stable. So if you have to change it using a centralized developer group as a reference, just again, build your own database. You are not even building on an external stuff. So uh, instability. But then the, 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 the possible option would be, for, for example, correct coin on, on Bitcoin. And even those I didn't like and Peter didn't like and the other people with me didn't like because even those are just like Ethereum, putting everything on chain. So uh, arguably, uh, um, following Peter's logic for client-side validation proposal, the less you put, but also following Lightning concept itself, the less stuff you put on chain, the better. The, the time chain, the blockchain is a beautiful invention, but it's super expensive, super bad for privacy, super, uh, it, it's, it's like precious. You don't have to waste it. You don't have to abuse it. You have to leave it for the absolute, absolutely necessary things. So if you follow these, everything complex, which is sensitive for privacy and also for minor front running, because if you do a complex contract on chain, then miners will mine blocks based on the, on the possible returns. It's like, you know, MEV. Uh, if you are a miner on Ethereum and there is some contract, you will mine blocks based on what you did on the contract in order to get more profit. So, uh, and you will censor. So there is, there, is a, a, there is basically, doing complex stuff on chain is bad for scalability. It's bad for security with the front running and it's bad for privacy because everybody else will see what you're doing. So every good innovation in Bitcoin is about, not every, but most good innovation in Bitcoin is about reducing the use of the blockchain. With Taproot, we take the script off chain and we only put in the spending script what we need and not everything else. With Lightning, we stay on ch off chain until we need to settle the channel. With RGB, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ethereum ERC20 is the complete opposite. Now they are in a confused way they are backpedaling to the idea of layers. But the, the original concept of Ethereum was, let's just, uh, it, it was taking the color coin idea, uh, seeing that there was a problem that miners were not validating. That, like, you take counterparty. You see that you have a problem. Miners are not validating counterparty rules. This is problematic because it means you cannot do hardware wallets in a simple way. You cannot do SPV in a simple way. So what you do is having the miners not just validating the, the Bitcoin transaction, but also any kind of complex contract. So it's actually the other way around uh, as a general design pr principle. Ethereum started as put miners in charge of everything and the global consensus in charge of everything. And the Bitcoin design was, let's not put more stuff in charge of miners and global consensus, and if possible, even less. Okay.